Hi, my name is Gabriel and I'm a friend of Eric's. I want to tell you about when Eric called me in the middle of a Sunday afternoon. It had been weeks since anybody had heard from him. His mom and other friends hadn't heard from him. Last we had heard, he left his phone at his sister's house in another state. He had literally been missing almost a month. When he called, I'm, I knew in my gut something wasn't right. He sounded worried, almost panicked. Stay away from me. You, you be quiet. You need to be quiet. His voice was all over the place, like he was about to start crying or have a nervous breakdown or something. And then I opened the door. Hi, my name is Eric and I have schizophrenia. I was not in a good place whenever I showed up at Gabriel's home. I don't even remember how I got there. I was really scared when he came inside. What's up, man? You okay? What are you doing? Lock the door! And there was these people talking at me. It felt like I wasn't even there anymore. No, you leave me alone. I'm tired of listening to you! Just stay away from me! My girlfriend was there, and when he started to move towards the bedroom, I stepped between him and the door. What's up, man? Who's back there? It's just Ashley. Who? Ashley. Who's back there? My girlfriend, Ashley. Just talk. Just calm down and let's talk about this. What's going on? I didn't know what he was going to do. He was speaking to people that weren't there. I was demanding things. I need to talk to you. Open the door. Who's back there? I sounded aggressive. And I was unwell. I hadn't showered in weeks. My clothes were filthy and dirty. And I just ran to Gabriel's home. I just need to get away from everybody. Because I was talking to everyone and no one all at the same time. He's my friend though and no one had heard from him in a while. I just wanted to make sure Eric was safe. Calm down and let's sit down and talk about it, okay? Just breathe a bit. I realized something serious was going on pretty quickly and I didn't want him to spiral out of control. By talking about his feelings and the facts as he knew them, we might be able to talk and work through some stuff. He started talking about his new job and being off his medications. He started talking about his partner, Michael. I have this really awesome job and it's just so great. And these, these people are following me and I just don't know what to do. I came here because I know this place is safe and that, that's what I do, right? That's, that's what friends do, right? They come here. So I'm just really, really happy to find you. And they're, they're outside, they're outside. When he started talking about his new job, I knew that it was bad. He said he was working for the government and was scared that they would hurt Mike or me if he said anything else about it. I was scared because I didn't know what he would do either. I can't tell you more about it because then you'd be in trouble. And that's why I haven't told Michael either because he'd be in trouble too. He also said that's why he hadn't been talking to Michael. I kept a neutral face, but inside I wanted to call for help. I was getting more and more scared for my girlfriend and I. I mean, we're talking about his feelings and I was empathetic to him, but he was also scared and I couldn't tell him I was. It's just been really hard. I haven't been in my house for a good three weeks. Understand, man. Just like I said, let's just sit down and talk about it. It'll be fine, okay? And even when no one was around, I still could hear things coming from them. But Gabriel was smart, and he's someone I know I can go to. Gabe listened to me. He didn't interject, and he made me feel like I was heard. It was really easy to share my feelings with him. I just felt like I needed to be there for him. He seemed scared and so incredibly alone. I felt like I was alone. I couldn't talk to anyone about this, and I kept hearing these voices in my head out of nowhere. And I've been on my meds consistently for years, and I only took three months for these voices and figures to come back. I had to lie to my family and, and my partner. And that was painful. Even though he hadn't talked to anybody else about this, I felt good being there for him. He felt safe coming to me. He understood that something was wrong and he really wanted to save his relationship. I suggested that we call his partner to ask for help. I agreed to call Michael. I love him and I knew that he would understand what I was going through. He's always been there. I hugged Gabriel after he made me call him. <laughs> Although Eric was filthy, I know that's what he needed. I offered to let him take a shower and he agreed. After that, Eric set up an appointment with counseling services to see a therapist and begin the process of getting him back on meds. Gabriel and Michael were always there for me, and even though my life was spiraling. I was always appreciative of what they did for me. 
I love them and I'm really glad that they're in my life.